Hi, um, I'm Tim, and I self-identify as a software developer. Um, I'm also an open source developer, and I'm an Australian, if you can't tell from my accent. Um, and I have a lot of projects. I actually give a talk called, I have too many projects. Um, most of my projects are fairly big. This is the one that I primarily um, work on. It's the video capture system using FPGA, trying to make it very simple to record uh, conferences. Um, this takes a long time to do, though. I started in 2011. It's nowhere near close to being finished. I mean, we use it to record conferences, but we still have like a feature list that's infinite long. So um, don't know when it will be finished. And that's hard sometimes to not get to the end of your project and say you can be done. Um, so I also do smaller projects sometimes just to get that feeling of getting done. And this is the story of one of them. Um, so there's this stuff good to a second factor authentication hardware. And this one here is specifically called the YubiKey Nano. It goes in your uh, USB port and helps prevent you from getting fished. Um, this is my family. They have a whole bunch of computers, mostly hand-me-downs from me. Um, and they should be secured by two-factor authentication. Um, you know, they're prime targets to get fished. Um, so I saw that these YubiKey Nanos existed, and I was like, I should get them for my family. And I found out there was something wrong here, though. And the 50 US dollars each, and this is like from Australia, so you know, that's a bazillion Australian dollars, and I have to add shipping, and I love my parents, but I don't love them that much. <laughs> and I was looking at this and going, it actually has pretty minimal parts in there. I mean, it's pretty small. You can't fit a lot of parts in it. Um, it probably has a little processor, and I'm pretty sure it has less than $10 parts, and it's closed source. Um, and closed source and security don't play well together. And then I found this thing. It's called the Silicon Labs Happy Gecko. It's a 25 megahertz ARM microprocessor with a whole bunch of things included. It's $2.15 on DigiKey in individual quantities. Um, and I was like, that's pretty cool. So I thought I'd take one of these and build my own YubiKey Nano. And People kept telling me it couldn't be done, and so they somehow goaded me into it. So I created a schematic. I created PCB. Um, it was actually really fun. It took me less than a weekend to do both those. Then I put them together. Um, I have a lot of a failed attempts at putting them together. I am not a good solderer. Um, you can go over there and see some very black-looking Tomu boards. But I finally got one that worked. And it worked. You can kind of see it here. This is before I decided red and green were good colors. It's red and white. And so this is the Tomu. It was like $10 in individual quantities to build. It fits inside your USB port. It's hand solderable. Um, if I can do it, I'm pretty sure everyone else in this room can do it. Um, and it's definitely makeable by hobbyists. And it's very makeable with hobbyists because the 6 mil, 6 mil system that we're using is like producible on everything, including you know, everybody's favorite, Osh Park. So you can build yourself a purple Tomu. Um, but there's a problem here. And the problem is that I've only done the hardware so far. How do you get the software? And I was like, how I still need the U2F software to actually secure my family. But I was after a smaller project and didn't want to do the software. Um, but I'm an open source developer, so I know the solution to this. First, you make the whole thing open source so that anybody can make one. Then you make a lot of them, and you give them out to people. And so I just went around and gave them out to people. And you know, they're $10 in individual quantities. When you make 100 of them, they drop significantly in price, and it worked. Uh, eventually, somebody was silly enough to write the U2F firmware for me. Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, but as I said, I made 100 of them, and I kept giving them out. Um, and so 
it turns out lots of people made lots of interesting things using them, and that was really cool. And they kept asking me for more. Um, people actually wanted the Tomu, but I was after smaller projects, and I mean smaller, crowdfunding is not a small project. Um, so I found this guy who's a bit of a sucker, um, <laughs> and he built them and ran the campaign, and now there are lots of Tomus out there. And in fact, you should have one because it's in your bag. And I was just able to do that because they're cheap. And I want you all to do really cool things. So that was kind of the Tomu project. Um, but sometimes I'm silly and these projects keep getting bigger. Um, so we created a new Tomu. I do a lot of FPGA stuff and think FPGAs are really cool. So we created the FPGA Tomu, or the FOMU, if you prefer. Um, it's based on a lattice, ICE 40, UP5K, which has a whole bunch of stuff. Um, Luke Valenti, who does Tiny FPGA, actually figured out how to build this for us and build a prototype. And Sean didn't learn the first time, we'll be running the crowd supply campaign again <laughs> and producing it actually. Um, so you can kind of see it here. This is a normal tiny FPGA, which you can see is quite tiny, but you know, this one fits inside your USB port, so that's pretty cool. And it works. This is Luke um, showing some test demos. But I think probably a lot of you haven't necessarily used FPGAs before, and are like, what do these numbers mean? What does 5K LUTs mean? What does DSP tiles mean? Well, we have a little RISC-V CPU, a full SOC with peripherals, takes about half of this um, FPGA. So that leaves about half the FPGA to develop your own custom hardware, no matter what that is, whether you want to do some type of crypto acceleration or some other thing. The other great thing about this is we plan to ship it with this RISC-V SOC loaded onto it. So if you don't care about doing FPGA development, you can just treat it like a RISC-V CPU. Um, it should come with the ability to, you know, run RTOSs like Zephyr. And you can use an upstream GCC to do your development, just like if it was an ARM microprocessor. Um, and we're also planning to have it so that you can load stuff onto the RISC-V um, microprocessor without um, having to reprogram the FPGA or anything, just using device firmware update, or if we manage to get to it, the UF2 protocol where you just drag onto a virtual mass storage device like the microbit and that type of thing. Um, there's even a soft CPU contest going on with the RISC-V Foundation at the moment, which is targeting this FPGA and seeing how performant you can make a RISC-V or how small you can make a RISC-V um, that fits on this device. The other great thing about this is this FPGA has a completely open source tool chain, so you don't have to download 20 gigabytes of stuff and get a license to start with it. Because of that, we added support to the same system that I use for developing the HDMI USB firmware, this LightX thing, um, support for this device. That means that I also have another project, as I said, I have too many projects, um, called Foopy, which lets you run MicroPython on any board which the LightX build environment supports. So you can run MicroPython on your RISC-V system. And the really cool thing is our SOC-based system is also Python. So you're running Python on a system generated in Python all on your, um, inside your USB port. So that's the Tomu FPGA. Um, I think it's pretty awesome. I think that's the last slide. And I've got like 20 seconds. So if you want to sign up to be notified when you can start uh, ordering the Tomu FPGA, um, it's the FOMU-CS link. And all these slides are at the Tomu-H 
had 18 um, thing, and feel free to come and talk to me. Um, Tommies also get lonely if they get stuck in drawers, so <laughs> please give them to somebody who will use them. And if you're interested in getting more Tomus, my policy is do something cool with them and I'll give you more. I have probably another 200 here. Uh, the other problem with small devices is that they don't look that impressive when you've got lots of them. Um, <laughs> but yeah, come and talk to me. I will give you hardware if you do cool things with them is kind of my policy. Thank you.